Welcome to Screen Time, movie streaming and everything in between. Gary and Drew here. We're talking about Ted Lasso. Now, we're not waiting for the season to end. This is, I, I will speak for myself, one of my favorite series. And this is called the Ted Lasso So Far edition of Screen Time. And Drew? Episode, uh, season three. Of season three. Uh, my feeling is I'm finding Ted Lasso, the character, very annoying. I rooted for him in the first two years. And I, knowing Jason Sudeikis, I think it's by design because he's brilliant. But I'm ready for Ted to go and for this team to win. I'm like the owner. I'm like I'm like Hannah Whittingham there who said, I need you to win, Ted. You know, and I, I'm really frustrated with Ted at this point. How about you? Disappointed in a number of ways. And I'll okay. tell you what I think the problem is, but it's not so far, just three episodes, going to be 12, I guess. So far, uh, it doesn't meet the standards of the first two seasons, as far as I'm concerned. And I'm sad to say. Now, of course, we're talking, in case you haven't, for people that maybe are in the same boat as us, we, you know, or if you haven't watched it, basically the premise of the season three is that they're bringing in the big star. They're bringing in the big high maintenance star who's a jerk, who's selfish, but he's the greatest soccer player in the world, and his name is Zappa. It, it, he's he's a better Jamie Tart though. Jamie, yeah. we, we went through this with Jamie Tart. You know, I didn't even think about that, but yeah, but you're right. You know, it's the kind you're right. You have to see that again. I, I didn't even think about that. I didn't think it. Yeah, I didn't see it and that Jamie way. Jamie just, reason. Jamie just, you know, had a breakthrough last season. And we loved it, and it was great. And now he's pilly again because this guy's in and a bigger star than him. It's like, you know, what are you doing? Well, I also think, though, that Jamie's in a different boat because now Jamie feels the way other players felt when he was around. And I don't know if he had an opportunity to feel that way. There's that, but I don't know. Maybe they'll, they'll explore it. I'm sure they'll Yeah, that it. doesn't bother me because we know that Jamie is – has gone into the office and complained, and it's obvious that he's not thrilled with Zava being there. It was this agnomatic just dude that doesn't listen to anybody else and tries to be this deep thinker and meditating before a game, which is fine if that's what you do. I mean, whatever. Um, but he's just like on a different, he's just in a different stratosphere than everybody else. Um, so I think that that's, I think that I'm, I'm, I'm anxious to see where Sudeikis and his writing staff with Brett Goldstein and, and Hunt and everybody, where they take Zaba, you're not interested in that at all. Nope, there's a problem. You just hit the problem. The, the problem here is writing. And I did some a little investigating. The problem here is the writing. I, I First of all, I feel like Jason Sudeikis is the same stuff. He's doing that same stuff with language where he makes the little quips and, right. you know, whatever somebody says, he plays off it. And it's getting old and it's not funny. But yeah, it's getting and, annoying. And, yeah, and it seems forced. It's the only word I can come up with. It seems forced. Even the acting isn't as good. And I don't blame the actors for that. They can only do and say what the script says. And I'm telling you, no offense, I hate to trash writers, but something's wrong, and I know it's wrong. There's new writers. No question about it. Well, I think so. Brett Goldstein has been involved in Shrinking. Yeah. Right, the other show. So Goldstein was one of the writers. I mean, Goldstein is one of the MVPs of that he group. He was story editor. Writer. He, actually, he was story editor. He actually wrote a couple episodes. Um, what happened in the first two seasons, there's 22 episodes. Only six had multiple writers. Now, they always list the developed by, which is Sudeikis, Lawrence, Brendan Hunt, and Joe Kelly. They always list them. Right. But then they give writing credit. And of the 22, only six had multiple writers. Five of those epi six episodes were some combination of those four guys, whether it was all four or three of them or two of them. And the other one was you know, Brett Goldstein and Joe Kelly, okay? These three episodes, four writers the first one, three writers the second one, four writers the third one, none of them are those original four guys. 
there's a woman named Lee Ann Bowen who wrote an episode in the first season, an episode in the second season. And she wrote the first episode of season three with three staff writers, one of whom is an, another writer, but the two new writers are somebody named Keely Hazel, who's an actress, and Dylan Mar Marin, who's an actor. The second episode, I said, it's three writers. It's Sasha Guerin, who also wrote an episode um, in, I think it was in season two. And she got those same two writers, Keely Her you know, Hazel, whoever she is, and Dylan Marin, getting writing credit. And the fourth one is a guy named Bill Rubel, got the writing credit. He had written an episode in season one and an episode in season two. So look, they're talking about there's people in each of these three episodes, writer, a writer who had experience writing in the first two seasons. But then there's these two other writers. Anytime a show goes bad, the first thing I look at, who the hell's the writers? Did they change the writers? And invariably, that's what happens. And they've changed the writers. And I don't want to trash the show. I love the show. I love Jason Sudeikis. He wrote great stuff. Sudeikis wrote great stuff. He didn't write, I, don't, I think he wrote one episode in the second season. He was involved in you know four in the first season. He's not involved at all in this. Well, also Bill Lawrence, I, I just looked up, was also involved in Shrinking. So he and Goldstein were involved in that. So that took them away from this show because they had a chance for more success and make more money to go to another place. Mm -hmm. I also know that this was originally supposed to debut in the summer, but they did not like the way the season was going. So they pretty much scrapped the whole thing and started over. And that happened last spring. I'd hate to see what the scrap was. Well, maybe the scrap was probably the good stuff. Maybe they were overthinking it. I don't know. But the one thing about Ted is everybody's character has evolved except Ted. Yep. And once again, oh, geez, his wife, now his wife's got a boyfriend. The boyfriend was the marriage counselor. You know, we're supposed to feel sorry for Ted. And, and look, we just got to the point when he was in therapy in the second season where we figured out why he's the way he is. And that's great. So why are you going backwards and doing this again? I, I'm sure, I, I shouldn't say sure. I hope that in the nine episodes to come, he comes around, just like you say. And that would be good. I mean, this is the real blow because he's, for the first time, found out his wife is with somebody else. Well, and, and also we could tell what they're setting up. I mean, they're setting up him returning to America. Well, yeah. he has to. I mean, yeah, so, where's this going? Where's this whole thing going? Right. I mean, one of the you think things of the premise, like he can't stay there and become, you know, the chairman of the Premier League. Well, no. And, and, and one of the things that I find frustrating is that he hasn't learned the game. It's like season three and he still hasn't learned the game. And they had him reading a book like the last, I think. Well, the, I, the, the other coach, what's his name? Beard is to read, you know, he's asking him questions and he's got the book. And, yeah. But, but like, but he's always, but like he's, he's, you know, Ted just started to, you know, read a, a book on strategy and, and Beard, you know, Brendan Hunt was like, well, what's up with that? And he said, oh, just, so now you're thinking, okay, is there going to be a game where Ted calls out a strategy? Is there going to be a game where Ted rises to the occasion? Is there going to be a game where Ted develops? Because now it's kind of like, Ted, it's time to move on. And it's obvious this is the last season and that he's going to go back to America because he's going to want to be with his son. And I think they've set that up. I also thought, they set up Nick Muhammad, great. Yeah. You know, as he's coaching, um, I forgot. What West Ham. Name. West Ham against Rupert, you know, uh, Hannah's old old husband. And I thought that was great. So it's going to be, you know, it's going to be Nate against, the, against his old friends. Well, then out of nowhere comes this guy, Zava. And I'm like, wait a minute. I think, I thought this was going to be about Nick versus Sadekis. Zava's like a cartoon character. And, and not in a good way. It's, it's again, it's forced. He's, he's doing these incredible scorpion kicks and bicycle kicks and, you know, the goofy things that he says. And it's just, and, and you watch Danny fawning all over him. And it's like, it just doesn't seem right. It doesn't have the same heart in my mind. Right. The first two, first two seasons did. And I well, hate to I, say it because I love it. Again, I love Sudeikis. I love what they did. I just I'm disappointed in what I'm seeing here. Well, I still love Juno Temple, and I love what she's going through. And then, you know, Leslie's still great. Uh, Rebecca's still great. Um, and I love, all, all of it's there. 
But you're right. The meat of it is leaving me a little hollow. The Zava thing's leaving me a little hollow. I, I understand what Nate is going through now, but I wanted more of a confrontation between him and his old club. Well, we'll get that, I guess. And, you and know, Trump Krim, right. it was nice bringing him back. He's writing a book, and now they got Saba. Well, the I like that, bringing in a star was very smart. The star they brought in is over-the-top cartoonish. They should have brought in a star that's like a real star and not nuts. You know, they, they, they bring, they're giving us the English version of Kyrie Irving, you know. It's just yeah. well, I would yeah, I mean, I was even gonna say, you know, like Kenny Powers on East Bounded Down, except he wasn't as good. You know, it's yeah. it's it's not even that. It's and and the fact that you already have Ted as the absurd character. I mean, the reason it works so well is because I mean Ted the, the, the Ted character, and I say this in a good way, it's absurd. I mean, it's over the top, it's funny. There are moments of grounded reality, which makes it very good. But he's kind of the cartoon character surrounded by everybody else, right? You don't need this other guy. That's and, and I agree with that. And the humor seems to come out of, and this is when comedy fails, when the humor tries to come out of purely the dialogue. Right. Well, they've done that. Where, yeah, that's not worked lately. Yeah. And, and that's when you see that in... I hate to say it, network TV comedies. It's all, you know, ghosts and all that stuff. It's all who can come up with the clever line. Nah, right. It doesn't do it. It's it's called situational comedy. It's the situation, you know? It's right. the action. It's what's going on. And and there's such great characters they created. And I read that Sadeka said, look, problem with season three is we had so many stories we had to explore. We had to figure out who to concentrate on and what to concentrate on. And And I get that. And it's hard. It ain't easy to do what these guys are doing. Putting together those first two seasons of Ted Lasso, hard as hell. They knocked that out of the park. It's phenomenal. It's a, you know, it was a phenomenon. Um, I, I don't know. I don't know what the reviews are. I've I've seen bits and pieces, and they don't seem good. But then season episode had some bad reviews, and I loved season two. I thought it was good. Yeah, my only problem with season two is the one that was on Coach Beard for the whole show. That was a little rough for me. I couldn't stick with it. I miss the other guys. And I believe Brent Goldstein wrote that one. Yeah, I mean, and I mean, look, Goldstein's he's a really what with with Joe Kelly. Yeah, I mean, and they probably want you know they wanted to explore Beard a little bit. For me, it was I I it wasn't so much that I was I disliked Beard or Brendan's character. I just missed everybody else. You know, I wanted to see Leslie and Hannah and Juno Temple. And, and then you see Beard with his girlfriend in this one at the restaurant and they're like all over each other. And it's like, all right, let's go somewhere new here. Let's well, yeah, like, new. like what what would what would you do? Do you have any thoughts? I don't know. I, I would not have put I think the idea of bringing somebody in who's a star because they need that. They can't just win the Premier League with the roster they have. So you bring in somebody new. I would have made it completely different from another country, like, you know, bring in somebody from America. How interesting would that be? Somebody, the best player in America comes over. You know, some 17-year-old kid went over to England, right, a few years ago and was killing it in the Premier League. Bring somebody over from the United States. You know, do something clever. This Zaba is like, please, with the coat and all the stuff. And that, that, no, that's not working. I wonder if there could have been more between uh... – uh trent i mean uh crim is it is his first name trent crim the, the writer trent crim trent crim right the oh, by the way as an actor only had one line initially and yeah. turned the whole thing into a damn you know part yeah um you know if there could have been more between he and ted and sometimes you don't need to bring in new sometimes you just need to unearth what's already there what what you know what else what happened with uh What's his name? Brett Goldstein's character. And and the teacher, who I thought there was going to be oh, a romance. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. You know, I love the niece. I love that whole thing. What's that? That's and, a good question. You know, what, what, well, see, I maybe think, they're going to do it. And where's, what about, what about Ted evolving? Yeah. I mean, the one thing I heard about Sudeikis is he wanted to bring the attention to everybody else, which is admirable. And second, and, and it, 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 he involved a lot of the co-stars, but what about making season three, the final season, about Ted? And evolving and going to the next level. And where does Ted go from here? And is he going to stay? How about this? Ted has success. Ted starts to get it. 
is he going to stay? Is he going to go? Please stay, Ted. And, you know, and the final episode is, does Ted stay or go? The, maybe he picks it up. Maybe he learns it. Maybe they start winning. Maybe the crowd likes him now. Well, they're winning now with Zaba. Yeah, yeah, but maybe they want him to stay. Will Ted stay or go? You know? I don't know. I don't know. I, it, it pains me to speak not well of it because I well, love it. It's really hard to do. You and I have talked about it. I mean, these series are so damn good. And with streaming, you there, it's like you talk about situational comedy like ghosts. There's only so much they can do on network TV. I mean, you want to talk about being handcuffed. Look, I mean, being 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 a comedy writer on a network show is hard, man. Yeah. You can't say or do anything. Correct. Um, but when you're on these streaming series, it's like forget about it. You know, but see, if you lose your best, like you said, Sudeikis and Brett Goldstein went to shrinking. Or Kelly, you know. Kelly, I mean, went uh, to shrinking. Uh, Ke yeah, Ke uh, Kelly. The other, one of them went to, Kelly. Uh, went to shrinking. Yeah, uh, yeah. And, and you lose that. Guess what? This is what you get. Yeah. And I don't want to blame these new writers. They're new, but they have no credits. None whatsoever. No writing credits. Mm. Except for this. And I don't know. Well, dog, we'll have to wait and see what happens. I, I, I can I, have I another show when it wraps up. I hope they rebound. Hey, listen, look. Generally, season finales are terrible. Right? Well, especially episodic TV because they're not supposed to end. They're right, episodes. right. Like, you know, I mean, Ma MASH had the most viewers, but there wasn't a lot to choose from. Seinfeld was horrible. Seinfeld was horrible. Friends was okay. Bob yeah. Newhart might have been the best. Uh, it was all a dream. <laughs> What that you mean? Great. You mean the second one? Well, they, when he wakes up in bed with Suzanne Pochette, Suzanne says, Pochette. he can't yeah, believe the, the dream. He's at the end and he goes, I just had a dream that I was at an inn in Vermont. <laughs> yeah. That was a good one. Yeah. Okay. All right. Coming up, by the way, on the top five, folks, which you can check out on our YouTube channel as well as wherever you get your podcast, the top five SNL movie stars. After our top five, not the top, top five as in top, rankings. Our top five. Our top after five. They left Who after. we like the best. Who did we like the best? We. So you can pick on us. Yeah, so you can let, let us have it on Twitter, which, believe me, I'm used to. For Giuliano, I'm Gary Tangway. We are hoping that Ted Lasso rallies. And this has been Screen Time, movie streaming and everything in between. Mm.